What's up everybody, Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute since we've done a face-to-face -face video, but I'm really glad you guys are here. Welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be talking about my Jano Leafs, my custom Nano Leaf inspired light panels that I've been making the last few months. You guys have seen the live streams, uh, me working on all the different components for this project. I've been working months on this project. If you guys are following me on Twitter, you guys have also seen some progress pictures as well. So I'm really, really happy and excited to be able to finally share with you the entire build process from start to finish. I'm going to be showing you guys all the different components that I use in this build to make these nano leaf panels. So if you want to make your own at home, you can happily do so. And then I'm also going to be talking to you guys today a little bit about what I would have done differently or things to look out for when making these nano leaf panels. So let's get right into it. Really quickly before we get started, I just want to let everybody know in the YouTube community that we finally now have a Big Jano Discord channel. There'll be a link to it in the description below. Come hang out with other 3D printers, makers, nerds, hobbyists alike, and uh, come hang out in the community and let's grow the community. As of right now, this filming, we have about five members in the Discord. It is very, very new. So come join the Discord. Like I said, link will be in the description below. But let's continue to grow this community and let's get into Discord. I hope to see you guys there. So to give you guys a little bit of context of when this all started, so last year I decided to look into getting some nano leaf panels for my, my stream room, my game room, my office, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I realized that um, the actual nano leaf panels were fairly expensive. I know for a pack of 10, it was around $200. And I figured I would buy a couple packs to get the design patterns that I wanted. And it was just going to rack up a lot of money. And I thought to myself, there has to be a better way to do this. In my search for nano leaf panels online, I happened to come across a couple YouTube videos of others making their own nano leaf panels with some simple electronics and their 3D printers and even some soldering and some advanced cases. So I've ended up figuring out that I have a 3D printer. I can actually recreate this to an extent and make my own and try to save some money. This project was a really good project to tackle, especially using electronics for the first time in my 3D prints. I'm not an electrical engineer by trade, so I'm not as tech savvy with the electrical side of things, such as using controllers, different power supplies, and even addressable LEDs, which we'll get into in a little bit. But this was a great project to continue to learn and especially learn some new skills that can help, definitely help me incorporate into my 3D printing world uh, so I can create bigger and better projects down the road. So I started this project back in May of 2021. Then I was starting to come up with the design for these light panels. I wanted to come up with something really, really nice, but also very simple in terms of something that's not too complicated that would still work and it wouldn't be too hard to assemble and or uh, keep up. I ultimately decided on a triangular shape panel because it would be easier to 3D print, but also be easier to intermatch and connect to each other. Once I got my preliminary design in order, I went into Fusion 360 to 3D model something up. There's two components for each triangular light panel. You have the base, and then you have the top cover that's going to cover each triangular light panel from the LEDs. The triangular base has three punch outs on each side of the wall so that I can funnel the electric LED wires through to the next triangle with no issues. The top cover is actually a diffuser, so it's going to diffuse the light from the LEDs and give it a really nice effect when it's lit up. If you go about 3D printing these, I suggest printing the bases with about 20 to 25% infill. You don't need them to be fully 100% to be completely solid, they'll work just fine. For the top diffuser lids, I ended up printing them with a 5% infill with a grid pattern, and that ended up giving it a 8-bit video game uh, nostalgic aesthetic to it, which I really, really enjoy. So I was really happy I went with that infill pattern, but you can use any infill pattern you want. I just recommend using 5 to 10% infill so the LED light can shine through pretty well. For this project, we're going to print 10 full-size triangular light panels. So we're going to be printing 10 bases and 10 diffuser lids. I will have STL files for both components. If you guys want to 3D print your own later on, links to those will be in the description below. Once I got all my parts 3D printed, it was time to start focusing on the electronics, specifically the addressable LED strips. I didn't want to use just ordinary LEDs. I wanted to use addressable LEDs for this project so I can get the colors I wanted plus all the cool crazy effects you guys see behind me. I got these addressable LED strips from Amazon from a company called BTF Lighting. I bought one roll of LEDs for this project and then I also bought some solderless connector cables so that way I can trim the LEDs to each triangle and then take these solderless connector cables to connect one end of the LEDs to the next LED strip on the next triangle without having to do any soldering. 
Remember, I'll have product links for everything I use in this video in the description below, so you guys can look up exactly what components I used and where you guys can get them. I started measuring the inner wall of each triangle to see how many LEDs in each triangle I would need based on the geometry I wanted to set up. After I did that, then I was able to get an idea of how many LEDs I needed. Once I've done that, I'm able to cut the LED strips to length on the designated markings shown on the LED strips. These particular LED strips that I bought have adhesive backing to them, so I'm able to pull off the adhesive layer and glue them inside the inner wall of each triangular panel. From there, I take the end of the LED strip and pull back the rubber proof coating, which is a little bit of the silicone rubber, so that the three pads where I cut are shown. And at this point, I'm gonna take the solderless connecting cable and connect it to the three pads and make sure those three pins are in contact with the three pads so I can connect the next strip of LEDs to the next triangular panel. You're going to be doing this for each triangular panel you set up, so it really helps to make sure that you have your design set in place so you know how all your wiring is gonna go before you start doing this procedure. And sometime later, I had all my triangular panels wired up and good to go. Once I got all my LEDs wired up into each triangular panel, I needed to now connect these to a power supply and get them up and running and see if they would actually work. Now, this was actually a challenge for me because initially the power supply I bought was not powerful enough to run these LEDs safely and efficiently. I originally bought a cheap 30 watt power supply from the same company that made the LED strips thinking that that would be okay. However, I quickly realized that this would not be enough power to run these LED strips. Um, I did need a beefier power supply and to, to figure out how much I needed, we needed to do some math first. So first things first, I do wanna point out there because we are using a five volt LED strip, we wanna make sure our power supply is also five volts. We do not wanna mix a 12 volt power supply with a five volt LED strip. That's just not gonna work out. So in order to determine wattage and amperage, we're gonna do some basic math calculations to make sure our power supply is well rated. To determine the total wattage we need, we need to find out how much wattage per LED is used in our LED strip. In our case, there's 0.3 watts per LED at its worst case scenario. So we're gonna click 0.3 and multiply that by the number of LEDs that we're using. In this case, it's 246, so let me put in 246 right here. We get a number of 73.8 watts. Now we're gonna take that number and multiply it by 1.2. Now this 1.2 number is more of a factor of safety number. We're multiplying this by 120%, so we are well over designing and making sure we have way more than enough power and wattage and amperage needed to run these safely. So it's just an overshoot number that we are gonna use to make sure we definitely have enough wattage and amperage in our power supply. So we ended up getting 88.56 watts after multiplying that number by 1.2. In this case, we can then assume that anything above 88.56 will be satisfactory for our needs. So rounding up, our best chances will be getting a 100 watt power supply to fit our LED strip project. Now to determine the amperage we need, we just gotta take that 100 watt number we just came up with and divide it by the voltage, which is five. And sure enough, we have 20 as our number. So we need a 20 amp power supply to satisfactory fill our power requirements. So after those basic math calculations, we can determine that we need a five volt, 20 amp power supply rated to 100 watts of power. Math, that's what keeps me young. <laughs> Now that we have our power supply good to go, we can now set up our microcontroller to control our LED strips. For this project, I ended up choosing an Arduino Uno to be our controller. I chose this controller because I wanted something with ease of use. I haven't controlled Arduinos ever in my lifetime, so I wanted something that was gonna be really easy to use, but also simple in understanding how I could be able to code it and get the effects I wanted. I ended up getting an Arduino kit, which came with the Arduino, as well as a bunch of other components, including the jumper wires needed to connect the Arduino to our LED strips. You can find this on Amazon, and I put a link to this kit in the description below. One more item you're going to need before you start wiring up your LED strips to your power supply is a three wire open-ended power cord. You can get one of these on Amazon, or if you have one lying around your house, you can actually cut off the other end and open up the insulation to expose the three wires so you can wire it up to your power supply. However, this is the one on Amazon I bought. There'll be a link in the description as well for this one. At this point, this is where we're going to wire everything up together, but I don't want to get too detailed into this matter because it's just going to take too long to explain every little thing about this. 
and it could be a whole nother video on how to wire everything up but i do want to mention that this is a serious safety thing please be careful when you're working with electrical wires um, especially if things are live or hot uh, you don't want to electrocute yourself you don't want to hurt yourself um, please be safe when doing so um, I recommend this project not be a beginner's project. I recommend you have some understanding of electrical engineering knowledge before you dive into this project, before you wire anything up. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, ask somebody for help. There are some YouTube tutorials in here that I used to get everything wired up. Please take a look at those and see if those help you. Um, but if you don't know what you're doing, please, please find someone that does or can help you out. I'm not responsible at the end of the day if anyone's hurt or electrocutes themselves. And at the end of the day, um, you have to do this at your own risk. To sum it up briefly, you're going to take the open end of your power cord and the three open wires, and you're going to connect those directly into your power supply. On your power supply, you should see an L, an N, and a ground symbol. Your L or your live section, that's going to be your black wire. Your N, it means neutral wire, which means it's going to be your white wire. And then the ground symbol is going to be your green wire. Once you have your power cord wired up, you can now focus on getting your LED strips connected to your power supply and your Arduino. On the end of your LED strip, at the very beginning of the strip, you should see three wires coming out, a red, a white, and a green, that are all connected to a three-pin female connector. You should also see a red and a white open-ended cable. Those are going to be your voltage cables that you're going to connect directly to your power supply. For the other three wires connected to the three-pin connector, you're then going to use jumper cables to connect those directly to your Arduino. Use the Arduino tutorial video I link in the description to show you how that gets wired up correctly. To connect your open-ended LED strip voltage wires directly to your power supply, you're going to take the red wire and connect it to the positive voltage terminal. You can use either one of the two. And then you're going to take your white wire and connect it to the negative voltage terminal. Also, this is a good time to use a multimeter and make sure that the voltage on your power supply is set to five volts. If I didn't explicitly say this enough, make sure the power supply is a five volt power supply. You wanna make sure it's set for five volts because your LED strips are five volts. If you have it set any higher or lower, your LED strips aren't gonna work or not work as well. Once I got everything wired up, it was now time to program the Arduino to get the colors and effects I wanted for the LED strips. I found a really good YouTube tutorial series via Scott Marley he has a really good explanation on how to program these LED strips, as well as using fast LED software within the Arduino library. He has about six episodes in the YouTube series, and after going through his entire series, and after about a month of trial and error with coding, I finally came up with 10 really unique colors and transition patterns for my Jano Leafs that ultimately will pattern in and out every three minutes. So you see one pattern for a couple minutes, and then it transitions to the next one with no problems. Once we got all the programming done and squared away and we liked how it looked, all we had left to do was to verify the shape of the triangles we wanted, glue all of them together in that orientation, mount the entire panel up on the wall with some command strips, and then attach each diffuser lid to each individual triangle so we wouldn't see the individual LED strips. And just like that, we have our final product. Take a look.
the end of the day, this project was a really cool experience and yet still very challenging to me. I had never worked with LEDs before, especially these addressable LED strips. I also haven't worked much with actually wiring up electronics before and coding uh, microcontrollers, such as the Arduino Uno. So this is a great first step in incorporating some electronics into my 3D prints. And ultimately, these came out fantastic. These almost look exactly like the nano leaves you'd buy at the store, but a lot less money and a lot, feel a lot greater feeling at the end of the day knowing that I made these. After going through this project, looking back, there are a few things that I probably would change if I decided to make a 2.0 version of these. The first thing would be to maybe use a little bit different LED strip. So the addressable LED strip that I had bought had about 300 LEDs per five feet, which is very, very dense amount of LEDs, which draw a lot of power. Ultimately, I could have probably used half the number of LEDs per the same amount of LED strip and gotten the same effects uh, without much issue. Having lower dense LED strip would have lower power requirements in the power supply, which means I could have bought a power supply that wouldn't require as much power and one that could have maybe been a little bit more accessible and one that I didn't have to wire that could have saved me a little bit of time. But the learning and the challenge was ultimately just as fun. Another thing I would have done differently was maybe change the design of the diffuser lid. So the diffuser lid for each triangle, they do fit in within the triangle panel cutout but they're not as tight fitting and as secure as I would like them to be. Um, there's no good way for them to be secure. Occasionally they do fall off, especially when you're trying to get underneath into the wires and the LED strips to do um, any maintenance or check connections. And sometimes they do fall off from the, from the wall and uh, you just have to kind of put them back on. And it's kind of a annoying type of thing, but just another thing I would maybe change down the road. But all in all, I think these are just an amazing thing that I did. I, I'm really happy about these. I'm proud that they work and I get to show these off to all my friends and they all think the same thing. They're, they're super cool and I didn't have to buy the really expensive ones. So, uh, but I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you guys think of these? Do you like them? Do you not like them? What would you guys do differently? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your suggestions on maybe how we can improve the design. And if you guys want to build your own, I will have links to everything in the description that I use, along with all the tutorials that I use as well to get you keep moving and to maybe make these yourself. If you all want to see more awesome 3D printed projects like this, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up. It'd be greatly, greatly appreciated as we continue to grow this community so we can continue to create more awesome 3D printed projects. Also, I am on Twitch and Twitter. At Big Jano on Twitter is where you can find me. Big Jano on Twitch is where you can find me. I live stream there a few nights a week. It's a great time. Come hang out with me live. Also, don't forget, we started up a Big Jano Discord channel not too long ago. So we're continuing to grow that community as well. If you're interested in joining that, there will be a link in the description. With all that being said, that's going to do it for me for the end of this video. Thank you all for watching it and making it all the way to the end here. I greatly appreciate your support and I am appreciative of every single one of you. I'll catch you guys in the next video and until next time, keep doing it big.